Hello everyone, my name is Dan Halloran. And my name is Katie Stevens. And we're here in the Product Development Lab in Kohler, Wisconsin, where we develop all kinds of products, including toilets. For more than 30 years, I've helped to design toilets and other plumbing fixtures for sale and marketing around the world. And I work in Kohler Marketing, but probably more importantly, I'm a wife, a mother, and a user of toilets. I want to be sure that they're easy to clean and easy to use and that they work. Well, so I use toilets too. And you know, by the way, I clean them, but it's so important to really use the products and therefore you can design better ones. Here in the Product Development Lab, we do a lot of tests on toilets. We're going to show you four. Uh, we call it the bold, B-O-L-D. B is bulk waste. O is overall cleanliness. L is light waste removal, things that float. And D is does not clog. So we're going to get right at it. So Dan, I have a question. I yeah. was at a friend's house last week. They were having a big party, bathroom was getting a lot of use, yeah, and sure. I walked in and there was something left behind. Mm. It could have been the guests, it could have been the toilet, I'm not sure which. But why would that happen? And how do we make sure that doesn't happen with the Kohler toilets? Well, so we've got some very specific tests. The one that we do for, well, we call it bulk waste, it's this stuff. Okay. Obviously, it's not real poo. It's I like to call it full poo. poo. Yep, uh, it's soybean paste. So we're going to test this. How much could possibly be the right amount? You know, we can't just make this up. It must be based on something. Well, it is in fact. So a number of years ago, there was a research doctor, and we don't know why, but he had the good fortune of studying how much waste people pass per occurrence. And so the average result of this study was 150 grams. In the study, of course, there was someone that did a lot more, and that's 250 grams. So today we're gonna to do more than twice what everyone really needs. 500 grams, that's 1.1 1 .1 pounds. Wow. Exactly. So Katie, let's go ahead and do this test. Okay. Here in the lab, everything is always done the same way so that the results are predictable. So this happens to be where people sit. We've studied that too. So Katie, you just put it in like this. You've seen this before. Let's yeah. go ahead. So the technician puts the material in, and everything is done very systematically with a stopwatch. Um, in reality, there'd be a little bit of toilet paper added. And then we flush and count what comes out and what maybe doesn't. By the way, I didn't mention it. This is a Kohler Cimarron toilet. And let's just say this is not a Kohler toilet. And you notice right away there's a difference. So Dan, when it comes to overall cleanliness, there's nothing that I hate more than cleaning the inside of my toilet bowl with that nasty scrub brush. I'm with you. Okay, so how do we test for that at Kohler? Sure, so there's an industry test where you take a little fixture like this okay. that makes a mark and a water soluble pen and you make a, a line that goes all the way around the inside interior of the bowl. Okay. You flush it and you count up any little segments that didn't get washed off. Uh, anything longer than a half inch is a failure or two inches or more in total is a failure. Okay. Now, let's do that test here and then I'll tell you that in truth, because we have the aqua piston, Kohler patent that nobody else can have, we basically always ace the test and I'll show you that right now. So that's a fantastic wow. wash. That's kind of why it's exciting to work in product engineering. So Dan, as much as I hate to use the scrub brush and, and clean the toilet, I do feel that having a clean home and a clean bathroom and a clean toilet is a reflection of me. Well, as a toilet engineer, it's a reflection of me too. <sighs> of course it is. So I guess the, kind of thinking through that a little bit more, you know, I hate to see stuff left behind in the bowl. It's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. How absolutely. can I be assured that Kohler toilets flush everything every time? Sure, so I'll show you a test that we use for that. So this is an industry standard test. There's about 2,500 black granules. They float on the water surface. So they're the last thing to leave the toilet. And then there's 100 white balls. They sink, so they're kind of easy to get out. So we love this test because it allows us to look for flush to flush consistency. It's kind of the very question that you're asking. How do you know that it's gonna go out every time? And in particular, how, would, how do you know that the stuff that's kind of at the end is gonna go out? Right. So yep, this test exactly allows right. us to really kind of dwell on that yeah. and look at it and look for consistency and light waste uh, performance. So by the way, this is the L test, um, light waste removal. So Katie, let's go ahead and dump them in. All right. And then we'll flush both of them and see how they go. Ready, set, go. 
Now, wow. on this Kohler product, we did well. There's two granules out of 2,500, nearly perfect. On this competitor's product, it didn't do quite as well, and you might have to consider flushing it again. And, you know, it may not be as consistent, something that we demand of ourselves with our never compromise kind of mindset. Dan, I've entered a new stage of parenthood. I'm potty training my twins, and they like to use a lot of toilet paper. How can I be sure that it's all gonna go down? Well, so we've got the great test for that, Katie. It's the dozen clog test, the D in the bowl test. 36 sheets of toilet paper, double ply, national brand, and then because we wanna be really tough on ourselves, we staple it all together. So there's four pads. Now we use this test because our results, our research rather, shows that toilet paper is the leading cause for clogs, not really? human waste. Okay. So let's go ahead and demonstrate the test now. Okay. I will hold it over the toilet. I'll say ready, set, drop, and then we let it go. Ready, set, drop. And we wait for it to go a certain amount of time, and I'll use my eye to help us know when to flush. Ooh. It's all gone over here. But on the competitor's product, it's right there. In fact, well, kids don't do this at home, but you can reach right in and find that it's right there. Wow. So if that's what you don't want. That's exactly what I don't want. That's why we use this test to make sure that our pr products are always performing, because clogging is the number one thing that we want to make sure never is part of our customer's experience. So Dan, we've talked about toilet performance, right. cleanliness of the interior of the bowl. Can we talk about the trapway oh, for please, a moment? Let's... So this is an exposed trapway toilet, what most right. people have, right? Exactly. So this area of the trapway tends to get really dusty, dirty, grimy, and it's just downright difficult to clean. Absolutely. We have several skirted toilets in the Kohler lineup. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. So this attachment system, you notice all there is is this tiny little mm -hmm. exposure. What happens behind it, though, is what's really important. Okay. So we have a patented system, and in that system, the trapway has a cam that actually clamps the toilet down to the floor, but the installation is super easy. Okay. So we made it easy to install, but it actually works better than any other skirted system and has tiny exposures. It's just an example of kind of the excessive way that we always look at the toilet and what it has to do. Right. So we've given the audience a sneak peek of the toilet lab today. Yeah, welcome to the lab. Welcome to the lab. What are some parting words for our audience? Well, it's just this simple. We're really kind of over the top on anything related to toilets, and uh, we never compromise, and neither should you.